how to make my millionaire shortbread with homemade shortbread, homemade caramel, and a swirly chocolate on top. Honestly, it's a lot easier to make than you think, and it's one of the best bakes you'll ever make. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, today I'm going to be making one of the videos that everyone requests all of the time and it's how to make my millionaire shortbread. Sometimes a video tutorial is just what you need and it's the caramel part of this and honestly it's much easier to make than you think especially once you've watched this video. To make the shortbread, it's three simple ingredients and I usually stick to a ratio of two, one and three. So if you're making more, always stick to that ratio and you'll be golden. It's always two lots of butter, one part of sugar, three parts of flour. 200 grams, 100 grams and 300 grams. And honestly, that's it. I always use plain flour for my shortbread because if you're self-raising, it's a little bit cakey. And for me personally, if I'm making shortbread, it has to be real block butter. If you use a baking spread or a margarine, it might be a little bit soft or have a slightly different texture. And I want proper buttery shortbread. To make it is so easy as well. And you just whack the butter and sugar in the bowl, mix it and then add your flour and you've got shortbread. Once your shortbread is ready, it may look a little bit crumbly, but that's absolutely fine. What you need to do is to press it down into your tin. This is a nine inch tin as with all of my tray bake recipes. So I'm just gonna press it into the line tin, nice and firmly, and you'll have a lovely shortbread base. One top tip I have is to use a large spoon coated at the back with a little bit of flour to help you press it down without anything getting stuck. Once your shortbread is all pressed down firmly into your tin, you can bake it. Make sure to preheat your oven to 160 degrees fan or 180 in a regular oven. And you want to bake it for about 20 to 25 minutes until it's got a lovely golden texture. Once your shortbread is baked, it's lovely and golden and firm, and you can get straight on with making the caramel. The scary bit, but the fun bit. When making this caramel, it's four ingredients that are quite simple, but may sound a little bit weird for caramel. I've got condensed milk, butter, caster sugar, and golden syrup. And honestly, these are my holy grail ingredients to create the perfect caramel. I always use block butter because I find if you use a baking spread, it might split, but honestly, just cube up your butter and you're good. And then you have cast sugar, golden syrup, which is a bit of a sticky mess, but fine, and condensed milk. Always try and use the full fat condensed milk and not the light one. 
All you're gonna do is add it all to the pan on a low heat, let your butter melt, and then you're gonna whack it up to a rolling boil for five to seven minutes, stirring constantly till it's lovely and golden. I add my butter to the pan, along with the condensed milk. <laughs> the golden syrup. And of course, the caster sugar. So I've just added everything to the pan on a really low heat. I'm just gonna let the sugar dissolve. So if the mixture is still slightly grainy, it's not quite ready to turn up yet and make sure my butter has melted. Now my butter has melted, I'm gonna turn the temperature up quite a bit to make it a rolling boil. Make sure to stir it constantly so that the caramel doesn't catch. You'll know it's ready when this turns to a lot more of a golden caramel color and it thickens in the pan. Now you've done your caramel, it is lovely and golden and it's ready to set in the fridge. This takes about an hour, but you basically want it to be firm to touch so you can add your chocolate on top. Once your caramel has set in the fridge, it's lovely and perfectly firm to be able to add your chocolate on top. You can use whatever chocolate you like, but I tend to use a mix of two because I like to swirl it together and make it a really pretty pattern. So I've got 200 grams of milk chocolate and 100 grams of white and then have fun with as well. Now, if you think your caramel is slightly too soft still, so if you touched it and you could really sink it in, set this bit in the fridge. It'll make it easier for the caramel to firm up a little bit more as well with the chocolate. But if you're not worried, you can leave it on the side at room temperature and then it's easier to slice it later on. Once the chocolate of your millionaire shortbread has set, it's time to portion it and enjoy. I have my favorite technique for cutting up the chocolate, caramel and shortbread without it cracking, but there are various different ways you can try. Some people just cut away and it's fine. You can heat up the knife or you can even turn the bake upside down first. But my favorite way is to lightly score the chocolate with my knife and then cut for the perfect piece of millionaire shortbread. There you have my homemade millionaire shortbread. Perfect layers, even and delicious. Mm -hmm.